Hello, and welcome to Alameda County Fire Station 10 here in San Leandro. My name is Brendan Burke, and I'm a firefighter. Today, I'm gonna have the opportunity to take all of you on a station visit, as well as show you some of our emergency response equipment, and talk to you a little bit about what it's like to be a professional firefighter. Come on, let's get started. So friends, here's one of the very important rooms that we have at our fire station. This is the firefighter's office. It's where we input training, and also, much like you have had to learn on the computer sometimes this year, we do as well. Not to mention the fact that much like you, we have homework we have to do, and the computer helps us with that too. As you leave the firefighter's office, you'll find one of the most important tools that we have here in the fire station. This, as you can see, is a massive map which shows us where all the houses and businesses are where we might have an emergency. When a call comes in, loud noises come over the loudspeaker as well as lights begin flashing. We then get a printout which tells us exactly where that emergency is and that printout has numbers on it that define where we should be looking on our maps. These maps are very intricate, meaning that they have very, very specific things to them. For example, if we're responding to a fire and we're able to figure out exactly where it is on the map, you'll also see that there are blue dots where all of our fire hydrants are, so we know that we can get water for the specific fire or specific emergency. So friends, the next thing I wanna show you about the fire station is what we call our living quarters. What's unique about our profession is that when we come here to work, we're here for days at a time. Specifically, in this department, we work for 48 straight hours. That's two straight days. That means we need to do things like get some sleep sometimes. Come on, check it out. So here at Station 10, we're very lucky that everybody has their own bedroom. You can come see mine. When we're not going on emergency calls or cleaning the station or training, this is where I can come to get some work done or reading done and also where I'll sleep at night when we're not responding to those emergencies I mentioned. What we also need, as every house does, are restrooms. As you'll see here, again, we're very lucky here at Station 10, we have three restrooms, but it's our responsibility to keep them very clean. My guess is that when you're at home, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever's there's with you, gives you chores to do. Well, one of our chores involves keeping our bathrooms very clean. We stay busy much of the day, but if we do have a down moment, this is like our living room that you have at home. Here's where we can come to relax for a moment, to watch training on our big television, or even if we're lucky and we're not going on those emergency calls, my crew likes to sit down and watch sports, whether it's our Warriors, our Giants or our A's, our Sharks, or even our 49ers before they were out of the playoffs. Another thing we have to have at the fire station is a kitchen. As I mentioned before, we're here for two days at a time, so we have to be able to make each other meals and eat well. So as you can see, we're very lucky that we have a nice stove and we have three refrigerators. Why do we have three refrigerators, you ask? Well, because here and at most fire stations, there's three different crews that come in at different times. So when me and my coworkers get off, a whole nother crew comes on. This way, we don't mistake each other's food and we're able to keep our food safe for the next time we come in to work. Welcome to Station 10's gym. We're very lucky that each of our fire stations has a gym, but it's very important because as firefighters, physical fitness is an incredibly important part of our jobs. Much like when school is normal, that you kiddos get to do quite a bit of PE. And I'm sure right now, your loved ones at home are encouraging you to get outside and run around and get the wiggles out whenever you can. So here, we try to set aside at least an hour a day to stay physically fit so that we can do our jobs for the community. Okay friends, you've been very patient. I think it's finally time to check out the fire engine. So here in the back is where the firefighter sits. That's me. So I have a couple of seats that I'll sit in depending on what type of emergency we're going to. Come on up front. Here is where the captain sits. He's in charge of running the whole crew. And as you can see, he has something here that most of you will recognize. It's an iPad. But this iPad doesn't do the fun math games or lectures like you get at school. What this does is it tells us exactly where we're going, where the emergency is, and how to get there. Come on. 
Now, both of those positions are very important. However, without the driver to get us to the emergency, we couldn't do anything. So this is where the driver sits. The driver of a fire engine is called an engineer. And it's very important that he go to that map that you saw earlier, know how we're going, and then gets in here so that he can drive us to the emergency. Now it's time to talk about some of the emergency equipment that we have on this fire engine. One thing first to note, today you're looking at a fire engine. That means we have lots of water. In this case, 500 gallons to put out fires. If you see a fire truck, that's gonna be the piece of apparatus with that big, big ladder. So today for the fire engine, as you can see, right here is what's called the pump panel. Each of these, if pulled out when the engine is on, will provide water to different hoses that we might use to put out the fire. But check it out, because we don't just go to fires. We also go to other emergencies. Here, as you can see, we have things such as saws, emergency tape, bolt cutters, things that could help us get into places we needed to get into if you needed our help. We also go on quite a few traffic accidents. And sometimes those traffic accidents need us to really work hard. And we have big, big tools like this. You may have heard of it before. People often refer to it as the jaws of life. And with a simple click of the button, I'm able to open and close this tool, which will help me get into any car I need to, to help save lives if that's what we're called upon to do. Now we're at the back of the fire engine. As you can see here, we have a couple different saws that we use for different things, whether we need to cut a hole in wood or in metal. We can do either. Very importantly, here at the back of the engine, you're gonna see quite a few different types of hose. The biggest hose is the hose we use to attach to a fire hydrant that gets water to our engine. The other hose is often used for what we call fire attack, which means we use it to take off of the engine to go actually fight the fire. Another type of emergencies that we often go on are medical emergencies. Maybe you or somebody you love isn't feeling well and you need us to come and check them out. Especially now with COVID going on, we get lots and lots of medical calls. So we have all this medical gear that we can use to help people feel better. Also, because of everything going on in the world right now, you may see us wearing extra personal protective equipment, which helps keep us safe as well. So don't be scared if you see us in masks. It's just what we're doing nowadays. Before we move away from the fire engine to show you something else, I want you to see what it looks like when we're wearing all of our gear that we would be wearing to go into a fire. Because I don't want you to be scared of us if we look a little bit different. As you can see, on my back right now, I'm wearing what looks like a backpack. Now, each one of you kiddos, every day when you go to school, wears a backpack. Yours is filled with a snack, a water bottle, pens, and important work that you might have to do at school that day. Well, for us in the firefighting profession, my backpack is filled with air. That way I can breathe if I have to go into a house filled with smoke or fire. As you can see, it's still just me. I look pretty normal, except I have a lot more gear on. But once I start turning this on, I'll look a little different. Let me show you. The first thing you're gonna hear is some noises, a couple little bells and whistles. And that's just telling me that my backpack filled with air is on. The next thing that I would do is put my mask on. And this is where I'll start to look a little bit different. Perfect. So see, a little bit different, but it's still just me, okay? Now, hopefully you can still hear me okay. In a second, I'm gonna sound a little bit different. Maybe almost like Darth Vader. But see, it's still just me, Firefighter Brendan, okay? And if I need to, come into a house to find you or a loved one, and you hear noises like this, we want you to come towards us or call out for us. Because that's what we're there to do, to help you. And as you can see, it's not scary. It's still just same old me. Another cool thing about the fire service is that sometimes there's special emergencies that require special equipment. Here at station 10, we're very close to the water. And so as a result, 
we actually have fire rescue boats that we have access to that we will take out if there's an emergency on the water. Before we end the tour, there's three very important things I want to remind all you friends of. Number one, never play with fire. If you ever find matches or a lighter or anything like that, I want you to give it to an adult. Number two, the emergency number to call if there's ever a true emergency is 911. But we only call that number if there's really, really an emergency. And number three, and this is the one I want you to go home today and tell your loved ones that you need to do. I want you to have an exit plan. What that means is that if there's ever an emergency in your home, you and the rest of your family members know exactly how you're going to get most likely to your front yard, but no matter where it is, to a safe place. So go home today and talk to your family about having a good, safe plan to get somewhere safe if there's an emergency. Well, that's about it. Thanks so much for joining us for this virtual tour of Alameda County Fire Station 10. And remember, anyone can be a firefighter. All you have to do is want to help people, eat healthy, and listen to your parents and loved ones. And remember, be safe and be kind. And if you ever see a fire engine, you give us a wave. Bye, friends.